Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at setting up a Slack clone by using the open source tool Mattermost. Now if you're not familiar, Mattermost allows you to self-host a application that's very similar to Slack, has a lot of similar features. You can even include like the video calling by uh, including an implementation with a tool like Jitsi, uh, which allows you to do like video and team calling and stuff like that. In our case, all we have to do is go to Mattermost.com, sign up with uh, whatever you'd like, and then it should allow you to go to mattermost.com slash deploy. From there, we can then go ahead and create a Rails app. So we'll just say Rails new video. Uh, we'll do something like dash J for ES build and dash C for bootstrap. And we can go ahead and run that and then hopefully that'll, that'll finish up for us. While that's running, I just wanna talk about what you're gonna need to actually use Mattermost. Uh, the first one's gonna be the evil uh, Docker tool. So to use Mattermost on like Linux, you're gonna to need to run a command like apt install docker and docker-compose, I think are the two you need, uh, or like yum install or whatever you know flavor of Linux you use. If you're on Windows, uh, you can either do it through WSL, although I don't know how well that works, uh, but I think the recommended way is to just install the docker desktop client because in here you can actually just toggle a setting to use the WSL2 based engine. And then just by running this client, it'll give your uh, WSL instance the ability to use all of your regular Docker commands. So I can run like Docker PS or just regular Docker and it'll show you like all of the commands you can use. So all of this stuff works, including Docker Compose and you don't have to install anything after you have the client uh, downloaded. But okay, enough about that. Let's CD into our video app. And then in here, let's do a Rails G controller pages home just to give ourselves a home page. And then we'll do a code dot to open this up in VS Code because we're gonna be adding a link to our Mattermost uh, stuff, right? So we'll come in here, we'll say uh, inside of our config and our routes.rb, we wanna change this git to a root and the slash to a hash, just like we always do. Then we can come up to our app views pages homepage. And in here we can do something like a link to, we'll call it Mattermost. And then I think the URL is something like http colon slash slash localhost port 8065 maybe. And then if you would like to, I think you can even do a target and set the target to be underscore blank to open this up in a new tab. We'll go ahead, we'll run a Rails S just to start our server real quick, make sure everything's working. This should allow us to go to our homepage. Uh, let's maybe change the padding a little bit just for the sake of my sanity. So I'll do a dot container dot MT dash five, and then we can move this over here. And then we'll give this button a class of BTN BTN dash primary, something like that. So we can go ahead and save that. That gives us our Mattermost button. If we click that, it opens a new page and it tries to take us to the website. But of course this doesn't work right now. So let's try and get this working. Let's stop our Rails server and let's take a look at what the steps are. The first step is it says to clone the repo, which is simple enough. We are inside of our video app. We run this command, which is git clone, and then the URL, which is matter, github.com slash mattermost slash docker, and then it CDs into that directory. So we go ahead and run that over here in our project explorer, in our Rails app, we should now have a docker folder. And inside of that docker folder, we have some files. Uh, the next thing it tells us to do is to copy the uh, env.example file right here into a new file called .env so we can run that. That will copy it and now over here inside of our docker and our .env we can just change this link right here. So this is your domain what you would normally set up uh, but in our case what we can do is we can set this to just be something like 127.0.0.1 uh, and then save that. I think, uh, and then that should hopefully work. Uh, the next thing we have to do is create the required directories, which we can do this just by running this command. So this is gonna create a couple volumes, which are ways for the Docker instance to link to a folder on your actual computer. Uh, so what's gonna happen is when the Docker container makes some files or saves some information, maybe saves your messages or your database, it'll go into those volumes, which live on your actual computer. So that if you destroy the Docker container and make a new one, you still have those files there. So in theory, I could delete this container and restart it 20 times and still be able to like log into my user account and all of that. Uh, but if there's ever like a update to the OS or something, I would just spin up a new Docker container while I keep those files. 
So that, that works for us. Uh, that is the third command done. Let's go ahead and run the fourth one. And this is where the docker compose command comes in. So what it wants you to do is run sudo docker dash compose with a dash F docker compose dot YAML dash F docker compose dot without dash nginx dot YAML up and then a dash D complicated command, but it's just going to create the Docker network for you. And then it's going to start up your Mattermost, which does run on a Postgres uh, database, which you can see the info right here in our .env file. Of course, because your .env file has like your password and stuff in it, you probably don't want to push this up to your uh, GitHub repo or your whatever your repository you're using. So that's why in your .git ignore, you're gonna have that .env file ignored. Now, if you do rename this .env file, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that gets added to your git ignore so that you're not accidentally pushing up like your super secret password. So now let's go ahead and let's run a Rails S to start our server again. Come over to local, local host port 3000. We'll click on Mattermost, it'll open up a new tab. I'll full screen this. And we can see here it takes us to local post port 8065 slash sign up user complete. At this point, you can go ahead and create an account. So I can do something like put in my email, choose a pass or choose a username and then choose a password. I can just choose the password password. And now I'll create a team. Now there's also the option to go to system console, but for now let's just create a team to see what we get. And then I'll show you how to do the administration side of things so that you can restrict who can access stuff. So what do we want to call this? I'll call my team YouTube. This will make our team URL, uh, HTTP localhost port uh, 8065 slash YouTube, which if you're like deploying this to your actual website, you would probably want to change the host name in your .env file right here to be uh, the domain of your actual website. So maybe you'd have something like uh, domain equals uh, chat.dnin.com, for example, or like meet.dnin.com, or I think even mm.dnin.com for Mattermost. In our case, we're just using the local host URL uh, just so we can play around with it. But okay, we're gonna, we're gonna hit finish. And that gives us a uh, Mattermost server set up for us. So now we get this little welcome thing, it takes us to a bunch of different things. But if you've, if you've used Slack before, this all seems pretty familiar. Uh, but there's some cool features here that uh, I didn't even know existed. So of course you have like your text, you can send messages, you can like bold your messages, you have WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. That's pretty cool. You can attach files if you are so inclined. Uh, you are, of course, using your own server space when you do this, but I'll just grab one of these and paste it. So that's like a React logo that I have for some reason. Uh, you then have the ability to start threads. You can reply to this with emojis or something, just like Discord. Uh, you can also, over here, I believe, come over to boards, and this is gonna allow you to create stuff like a uh, dashboard for each channel, right? So if we come over to our channel, I'll create like a, a, a new channel right here, create a new category maybe, uh, or no, maybe right here, this plus, we can create a new channel. We'll call this developers, right? Uh, developers developing uh, developers or something, I don't know. We create this channel and then from here, we can create a board specifically for this channel. And then in the boards channel, we can now say, all right, I wanna use this, this content calendar or like a roadmap or whatever you'd like. Uh, and then we say, use this, use this template. And this will allow you to have a complete Kanban board set up in your, uh, you know, your chat, which is great if you're working with a team and you want to have some more of those, those functionalities where you can like decide who's working on what and move it through the workflow, etc. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but the, the really cool part is let's say you're on the channels page and you don't want people to just be able to create new channels all the time or create new categories. You can come over here to the uh, couple dots, click on system console. And then in here, what you can do, uh, you don't need to worry about paying right now. This is uh, just if you're trying to go up to the enterprise level, uh, but in our case, we're not doing that. Uh, we can come down to, I think it's permissions and then we can edit the scheme and this will allow you to change all of the permissions and they're all pretty readable for what you can do so what we would want maybe is for new people to not be able to add team members or create teams so only like approved users can add people uh, you could of course allow people to add team members if they so desire you probably don't want them to be able to manage public channels at all uh, but maybe you want them to be able to manage 
private channels, right? Maybe no public playbooks or, or managing of runs, but you can manage posts, which means you can edit your own posts, but not other people's and delete your own, but not others, et cetera, et cetera. You come in here, you save this. And now if we try to go over to localhost port 3000 incognito, and we go to like slash YouTube, that should take us directly to the YouTube uh, server. And then it'll ask us to log in. Uh, of course, if we don't have the ability to log in, then we're kind of uh, out of luck right now. But we can send an invite to someone with an email uh, address, of course, by going back to our channel and inviting members. And then we can invite or we can use this link here, which we can copy. And then we can come over to this uh, URL right here, paste this in. And that will allow us to sign up. So you can see here now it's taking us specifically to the create account page where we can choose the username and a password. So let's do like test at case.com uh, with like John and then a password of password. We can create that and it just takes us straight into the system. We've now joined the team, but we never got that prompt to go create our own servers. So that's sort of how you can restrict that. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff you can check out. I would highly recommend looking at like the Mattermost uh, documentation um, if, if you're so inclined, because uh, if you're gonna be running something like this, it's too much to cover in a single tutorial. It's just gonna be a matter of, you know, going through all of the docs and seeing what features you'd like, what features you wouldn't like, uh, and just configuring it as, as you see fit, right? But yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully it was helpful uh, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.